I love summer, but sometimes it sucks. It's just too hot, and when it's hot, I can't do anything. I consulted ChatGPT, and it gave me several solutions. But one specific solution caught my attention. I need a fan. Now I have two options. The first one, buy a fan on Amazon and get it the next day. The second one, try and make the fan myself. After deep thinking and reviewing the pros and cons of each option, the ultimate answer was clear. I'll make the fan myself. But if we are going to make the fan, why not be fancy? The fan we will be making is not like any other fan. It will be a fan and a screen at the same time. You might have many questions right now. A fan and a screen? Why? How? Why? Simply because it's fun. As for how, we take a strip of controllable LED lights. We fix it on the fan's plate. I know this might sound complicated, but believe me, the idea is so simple. It's not gonna be hard to make. It can't be that difficult. To make a single strip of lights show a full image, we will take advantage of a nice property called persistence of vision. Before we explain what this property is, let's first see how our friend ChatGPT defines it. Persistence of vision is the optical phenomenon where the human eye retains an image for a fraction of a second after the object has been removed from view. This phenomenon is crucial in the perception of motion in film and animation, as it allows individual frames to blend smoothly, creating the illusion of continuous movement. This property states that if the eye sees a light, and then that light suddenly goes off, the brain will continue to interpret that there is a light for a short time after it goes off, for about 30 milliseconds. This means if we turn on a light, turn it off for about 25 milliseconds, and turn it back on, our brain won't notice that the light went off, and we will see a continuous light but with lower intensity. To understand how we can use this property to make a screen, let's first make an image and explain using it. The first thing we will do is to divide the image into equal slices. Let's now imagine that we have a line of lights above one of these slices. Each light sees a small part of the slice below it, and lights up with the color of that part. This way the lights will draw a slice of the image. Let's now rotate the line a little bit and repeat. The lights now will draw a new slice of the image. And if we make the lights rotate a little faster, we will start to feel like it's drawing more than one slice of the image at the same time. So if we make the lights rotate more than 33 times per second, we will see the lights drawing the entire image. We can calculate the number 33 times per second by making the duration of each rotation 30 milliseconds to ensure the persistence of vision. So finally, if we attach lights to a fan, make it spin fast while controlling the lights accurately, we get a circular screen. We will need some lights. Additionally, we will need something to control the lights and change their colors. For this, we will use a small controller called Arduino Nano. But there is still something missing. How will the Arduino know where are the lights to determine which colors to show. To solve this, we will need to know the speed of the motor. Usually it's hard to estimate the motor's speed without measuring it, so we'll need to measure it. To measure the motor's speed, we'll use a magnet and the hole sensor. This sensor gives a signal when it passes by a magnetic field. Now, let's imagine that we fix the magnet at a specific point, and we fix the sensor on the fan's blade. When the fan is rotating, the sensor will give a signal when it passes over the magnet. We measure the time between two consecutive signals, and this will be the time it takes the motor to complete a full rotation. From this time, we can calculate the motor speed. And every time the sensor passes over the magnet, we redo the calculation. This means that we don't have a problem even if the fan's speed changes, because we will be calculating the speed at the end of each rotation. But knowing the motor speed alone is not enough, because if we want to calculate the position of the lights at the current moment, we need first to know the motor speed, and second we need to know the position of the lights at the previous moment. Fortunately, we can solve this using the same sensor, as we can determine its position exactly when it passes over the magnet. One crucial thing when building a screen is the ability to control the color of each pixel. This means the lights we use must allow us to change their colors. Those are called controllable RGB lights. RGB means that each light cell contains three smaller lights, red, green, and blue, like the pixels in the monitors and phone screens. And by changing the intensity of each of those three colors, we can get any color we want. There are many different types of controllable lights, but not all of them can be used in our application. For example, this is a strip of RGB lights that can be controlled and programmed, but it has two issues. 
The first one is that the light cells representing the pixels are too far apart, and we need the lights to be close to increase the screen's resolution. The second and the most important is that this type of light is considered slow, because we cannot change the color of the lights more than 400 times per second. 400 times per second might sound a lot, but let's do some calculations and see that we will need a speed much higher than this. Let's go back to our smiley face, and let's assume that we only want to display this slice. This means the lights will turn on when they are above this slice and turn off in all other positions. As we discussed previously, to achieve persistence of vision, the lights need to return to this position and light up at least 30 times per second to see continuous light and not a flickering image. This means that for each slice, we need to be able to change the light's colors 30 times per second. So if we have 100 slices, we need to change the light's colors more than 3000 times per second. I have already bought faster lights that are suitable for our fan, but they'll take some time to arrive. So in the meantime, let's make a simple version of our screen using single color LEDs and let's experiment with it. For our fan, we will need a slightly larger motor, so we will use this one. I designed this part for it, which represent the fan's plates. It will be mounted on the motor with all the electronics fixed here. I also designed another part to fix the magnet at the correct distance. The first design had some issues, so I made another one. Both designs were printed on the 3D printer. We will also need a controller to control the LEDs. We will use Arduino Nano. We will also need magnetic hole sensor, a magnet, LiPo battery, LEDs, resistors to protect the LEDs, and finally some wires. This is everything we need for our simplified design. Let's see what we end up with. And here is the final result. I know it's not amazing, but I would say it's enough to do some experiments. And since this is a simplified design, I didn't cover the entire blade with lights. This unfortunately means that we cannot show the full screen, and we can only show a ring. But I would say this is enough for testing. I guess now it's time to try some code. The first experiment we will do is to check if the motor is fast enough. We will keep the LEDs on, and try to make the motor spin fast, and draw a full circle. We increase the motor's speed by increasing the voltage, until the lights draw a full circle. This means that the motor is spinning fast enough. We've confirmed that everything is working. Let's try something a little more complicated, and try to draw a single line. To draw a line, we need to choose a slice and make the LEDs turn on only while in this slice. They should turn on when they reach the slice, and turn off when they reach the next slice. It seems there is a small issue somewhere in the code. Let me check. Now we can control the pixels accurately, and we can proudly say that we have a simple screen with a resolution of 6 pixels. Let's see what we can do with it. This fan is fun, but enough playing around. I got the new lights, and it's time to start working on our real project. Summer is over, and the winter season has begun. And unfortunately, I had to pause work on this project for several reasons. One of them is another larger project that I'll talk about at the end of the video. Even though winter is here, and it's no longer hot, we will continue working on this project, as it is a screen more than a fan.
We didn't go into much details about the design of the first fan because it was only for testing. But with this new fan, we need to think seriously before starting the design. One of the most important differences that will affect the design is that the old fan used LEDs that required less than 3.3 volts, meaning they could be powered directly from the Arduino. The new LEDs, however, need 12 volts, which means we will need a large battery or an external power source to run them. In the first design, since both the Arduino and the LEDs ran on a small battery, everything could be placed on the fan plate. But with the new design, that won't be possible, because the battery would be too large to rotate with the fan plates. In the old design, having the Arduino on the blade simplified the electronics, but there was a downside. We couldn't communicate with the Arduino while the fan was spinning. And if we wanted to change the image being displayed, we had to stop the fan, connect to the Arduino, and then update the image. So in the new design, if we want to make it easier to change the image without stopping the fan every time, the controller should not be rotating with the blades. So now both the controller and the battery should be fixed somewhere outside the fan blades while still being connected to the rotating LEDs. So could we fix them to the fan base and connect them to the LEDs with wires? Unfortunately, this will cause a small problem. We cannot directly attach wires to the rotating blades because after few rotations, the wires will twist and either break or stop the fan from spinning. That is why we'll use a component called slip ring. It consists of two parts that can rotate around each other with four colored wires in each part. The wires of the same color are connected and remain connected no matter how much the component rotates. The slip ring needs to be placed at the center of the rotation, which means the motor cannot be placed at the center of the fan. So we will need a way to transfer the motor's movement to the blades. The first design, I tried using gears and a belt to transfer the movement, allowing the motor to spin the fan without being in the center. The LEDs I'm using require 12 volts, so we will need a voltage regulator to reduce the voltage from 12 to 7 volts for the motor. Additionally, we will need a driver to control the motor's speed. Now that we have covered both mechanical and electronic aspects, it's time to talk about the screen. The screen will have a diameter of 50 cm, and for that we'll use a strip with 72 LEDs. First, I tested the lights, and they all worked well, so I designed the plates that will hold the LEDs and 3D printed them. But when I tested the LEDs on the fan, they started flickering randomly with wrong colors, indicating noise in the electrical signal reaching the LEDs. I tried distancing the lights from the motor, but the flickering continued showing that it was not caused by the motor's rotation. After a few tests, I solved the problem by using a 320 ohm resistor on the LED signal line. The belt mechanism also caused issues, so I replaced it by gears. And now we are ready to try showing an image. As explained earlier, to draw an image, we will divide it into slices. Each slice is broken down into smaller segments based on the number of LEDs. The first thing I tried was to split the image, calculate the color of each pixel, and store this information in an array on the Arduino. However, the array was much too large to fit in the Arduino's memory. The second thing I tried was to store the array on the computer. And when the fan blades reach a slice, the computer sends the colors of this slice to the Arduino via serial communication. However, even at the highest transmission speed, it was too slow, and I couldn't even draw simple lines. To speed up the transmission, we need to understand how colors can be represented on the computer and the Arduino. Any color can be represented as a mix of red, green, and blue. And by adjusting the proportions of these three components, we can create any color we want. So, to store a color, we need to save its red, green, and blue components, each requiring one byte of memory in the general case. This means if we want to send a color from the computer to the Arduino, we need to send three bytes. But this size is much larger than necessary in most cases. And if we can reduce it, we can speed up the transmission. The method we'll use relies on the fact that most images don't have many drastically different colors. And most colors repeat frequently or they are close enough that they can be merged. In each image we'll identify all the colors used and assign each a number between 1 and 256. If the image has more than 256 colors, we merge similar ones until we have fewer than 256. Why 256? Because we can represent 256 different numbers using one byte. This way, when we send the image's colors to the Arduino, we first send the list of used colors. And then we send one byte for each pixel's color number instead of sending three bytes. This makes the transmission three times faster. I tested this algorithm, and it sped up the process significantly, but it still wasn't enough. While there might be some tricks to save the image on the Arduino, I want the screen to display any image without having to save it each time, and I wanted to play videos too. This means we need to be able to transmit the image data quickly. So I switched to using a Raspberry Pi instead of the Arduino, because it is much faster and has more features, like allowing us to control the image via Wi-Fi. After switching to the Raspberry Pi, the fan is finally working, and we can display any image we want. Even though the screen displays images when the lights are on, 
they appear much clearer in the dark. And now that the screen is working, I'd like to go over a few points for improvement. The fan can draw complete images using just half of the LEDs. Because the LEDs on one blade will spin and cover the entire image area. However, if we use all the LEDs on both plates, we can draw the image faster, as the two blades will simultaneously draw opposite parts of the image. If we arrange the LEDs symmetrically, the fan will draw the images in 36 concentric circles. And since the image is divided into 100 slices, the resolution is 36 by 100, which equals to 3600 pixels. When we closely examine the images, we can clearly see the circles, separated by black empty areas. These empty areas are positions that cannot be covered by the LEDs. And now we will see another advantage of using LEDs on both plates. We can eliminate these empty areas, and at the same time double the screen's resolution by smartly positioning the LEDs. By shifting the LEDs towards one of the plates, the LEDs on the fan will no longer be symmetrical. This way, the LEDs on one plate will pass between the LEDs on the other plate, resulting in 72 circles instead of 36, doubling the resolution to 7200 pixels. In theory, if we use more blades and arrange the LEDs differently on each blade, we can further increase the image resolution. But since the LEDs we are using are quite large, increasing the resolution beyond this won't provide much benefits. We can see this by the fact that there are no longer any black gaps between the circles. One more thing, if we look closely at the images, we can see that the center of the screen is brighter than the edges. This happens due to the fact that the central LEDs cover a much smaller area, creating a higher concentration of light in the middle. To correct this, we can adjust the brightness of each LED, so it's proportional to the area it covers. And since we can show images, there is nothing stopping us from displaying videos as well. To show a video, all we need is to break it down into a sequence of frames and show them one after another. There is just one last thing to do before we can consider the project complete, and that is to finalize the appearance of the fan and to cover the electronics. Now we can officially say that this project is done. As I mentioned, one of the reasons that this project was delayed is another big project. I have been working on a flying robot that utilizes a concept I haven't seen used anywhere else before. A winged robot that flies within an airflow and controls the flight only by changing its shape, similar to how skydivers control their descent. The next video will be about the robot, its design, and the physical principles it employs. So if you'd like to learn more, make sure to subscribe. And if you have any other project ideas that you would like to see, feel free to share them in the comments. And if for some reason you want to watch the same video in Arabic, check the link in the description. See you in the next one.